G'day guys, how's it going? My name is CJ. So this video is gonna be about the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. It's a beautifully designed flagship smartphone that I've been using for the last couple of months and it's been an excellent start to 2018 for flagship smartphones. Even though this phone has already been out in Australia since November 2017, but since it's only being available in the US more recently, I thought now was a better time than ever to make a video about it. So, without further ado, let's get started. The Mate 10 Pro is a beautiful phone. Like most flagship these days, it's a glass and aluminium sandwich. It even has glass on the rear. But unlike most manufacturers, Huawei doesn't actually use this glass rear for any other reason except for aesthetics. So there's no wireless charging here. And that's a real shame. Despite that, the Huawei Mate 10 Pro is probably Huawei's most beautiful and striking phone to date. I love the way it looks and I love a little color strip on the back with its inline cameras and the fingerprint sensor. There's also a number of different color schemes. I've got the one in midnight blue here, which is a really nice looking shade of blue. And as an added bonus, it comes with a nice silicon case and also a screen protector pre-installed. It's a very small gesture that I feel goes a long way to make the customer feel a little more satisfied about buying this phone, considering a screen protector and a case is usually the very first accessories that anyone buys for their smartphone. Now looking at the external design, it's got a nice sturdy aluminium frame, although it is a tad on the slippery side. That being said, it's got really nice tactile buttons, the volume buttons and the power buttons are both nice and secure, and the power button is slightly textured so you know what you're pressing. It's also got USB-C, which again is standard for 2018, and it also has a downfiring speaker, which contributes to the stereo sound. And unfortunately, there is no headphone jack, but what it lacks in a headphone jack, it makes up for with an IR blaster, which is a rare feature these days. Now for most people, it's not gonna be that big of a deal but I do like to have this small little luxury considering most people will probably have at least one or two appliances that use an IR controller. Then on the front we've got a nice crispy 6 inch 1080p AMOLED screen made by Samsung. It's not as crispy as its little brother the Mate 10 with a quad HD resolution but I find the 1080p resolution is more than sufficient for most uses. Also the fact that it uses a Samsung display means that what you're looking at is of really high quality. So you've got colors that pop and are as accurate as most flagships on the market right now and it doesn't exhibit any color shifting at any angles unlike the Google Pixel 2 XL and the LG V30. The screen also supports HDR and there also seems to be an inbuilt software sharpening when you look at videos and photos. Now it's not going to be for everyone. Some people might like it, some people might not like it, but you have to be aware of it because you can't actually turn this feature off either. In any case, watching movies and consuming media is an absolute delight on the Mate 10 Pro. The beautiful display combined with some really excellent stereo sound makes for a phone that you're not going to be able to put down and you could probably end up watching watching it all day as well. And that's primarily thanks to its massive 4,000 mAh battery. That dwarfs all other manufacturers' flagship smartphones. That's 500 mAh more than the Galaxy S8, the Note 8, and even the Pixel 2 XL. Now on the surface, you would just automatically assume it would have longer battery life. But obviously that's not the full picture. We've seen that with the Pixel 2 and we also see it with the iPhone a lot. So software optimization goes a long way. But the Huawei Mate 10 Pro is an absolute beast when it comes to this anyway. It did start out a little bit shaky at the start before it adapted to my usage patterns, giving me only around three to four hours of screen on time right when I started using it. But as I've used it longer and longer throughout the last couple months, the phone has gradually picked up and optimized the phone for my usage habits. And now I can get around six to seven hours of screen on time with pretty heavy use. That's excellent for any flagship smartphone these days. And then when you pair it with Huawei's own supercharger, which can bring you from zero to 50% in 30 minutes, you've got a phone that's gonna keep going and going and going. Then when talking about the actual sensation of using this phone, that's not bad either. It packs an in-house Kirin 970 AI chip with a neural processing unit, allowing it to leverage a bunch of AI capabilities as well. Then you pair that with six gigabytes of RAM and you've got a phone that performs like an absolute beast. 
The only other phones that pack 6 gigabytes of RAM is the Note 8 and the OnePlus 5T. And we both know how both of them perform. And the Mate 10 Pro is no different. So what this means is it will perform admirably regardless of any task you throw at it. Even if it does pair a fairly questionable UI experience. But more on that later. The key in its performance lies in its AI capabilities. Huawei says that it'll adapt to a user's usage patterns and what that means is over time it'll continue learning how you use your phone and it'll continue optimizing the software in order to keep it running nice and smooth. Now that particular feature is quite hard to test right now because I've only used it for a couple of months but that's something that I'll revisit in maybe six to eight or maybe even ten months down the track to see how it's all going. But overall the promise is one to two years down the track it should still feel like as if you took it straight out of the box. Which is also interesting because when I first started using the phone, there were instances where even just performing very menial tasks like multitasking, loading the camera, scrolling through web pages, the phone did show a few drop frames. But obviously over time as the CPU has been learning my usage habits and optimizing the software, all these issues have been ironed out and it feels like an absolute beast. Now the next area where AI plays a really big part in improving the experience is in the camera. Now before we talk about that, let's talk talk about the raw specs. It's got a 12 megapixel RGB sensor and a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor that are joined together in order to provide photos that are crisp, detailed, with excellent color reproduction. And now capturing the light for both of these sensors is a large f1.6 aperture wide angle lens with optical image stabilization. And so in the end, what you've got is a camera that shoots excellent photos and is continually reliable. The image processing isn't heavy handed like some other manufacturers like LG or Samsung, and most photos will come out balanced. The only real issue that I've seen with the Huawei Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro is that in outdoor scenarios, there were a few instances where the photos were looking overexposed. Whilst this issue didn't crop up that often, it did come up enough for me to notice it. But it's a small issue and a few little taps can resolve this pretty easily. And so shooting photos in most scenarios usually would get you a pretty nice photo, even in low light, thanks to its now optically stabilized lens. Now talking about the AI side of things, Huawei leverages the neural processing unit in the Kirin 970 in order to identify the scene that you're shooting and then adjust certain image processing parameters to make the photo look even better. So say you're taking a landscape photo, it might sharpen the details a little bit more and also bring up the shadows so you can see a little bit more detail. And that's compared to say if you're taking a portrait of someone where it might emphasize the details in the eyes and then soften the skin tones to provide you with a little bit more of a pleasing looking image. That being said, Huawei isn't exactly the first to utilize AI in its camera. That crown goes to the Pixel 2 with its portrait mode. And speaking of portrait mode, it seems every flagship smartphone needs to have one of these modes in it. And that's no different with the Mate 10 Pro. But luckily, the Mate 10 Pro's portrait mode is actually one of the better ones that I tend to enjoy. Now, it doesn't have as cropped in of a field of view like you see with the iPhone or the Note 8, but I like that. It means you can get more of the scene in, gives you a little bit more content text while still simulating the background blur. Now the blurring isn't anywhere near as heavy handed as say the iPhone or the Note 8, but that actually looks a little bit more natural considering if you were taking photos with a DSLR, at wider focal lengths, you naturally get less background blur when compared to shooting with say a telephoto lens. And this portrait mode feature extends to the front facing camera as well. It's an eight megapixel shooter and like the Pixel 2 XL, it leverages AI in order to be able to blur out the background and detect the edges. But if you're not into the portrait mode features, the selfie camera itself is actually still quite decent. Decent amount of sharpness and not too much over-processing like we see with the Galaxy S8 or the Note 8. And then shooting video is pretty standard as well. It can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second. And thanks to the optical image stabilization, video tends to come out pretty smooth with a decent amount of image quality as well. I still wouldn't put it as high as say the iPhone 10, which is probably the industry leading smartphone video camera at the moment, right next to the LG V30. But otherwise, the overall package with the camera is really 
really, really solid and I think you're going to be happy with it. So this is all sounding really good, but what about the negatives? Well, the biggest problem that I have with the Mate 10 Pro is in its software, or more importantly, its UI. You'll immediately notice that Huawei isn't even trying to hide the fact that they take a lot of their design cues from iOS. EMUI, straight out of the box, disables the app drawer. You can turn it on again, but straight out of the box, there's no app drawer, which is exactly like the iPhone. Notifications look familiar. The settings panel looks familiar. Folders work in a familiar way, familiar, familiar, familiar. I mean, this isn't even my biggest issue with the UI. I actually quite like the iOS's UI and taking elements from it, for me, can only be a good thing. However, my pro biggest problem are its inconsistencies. So take notifications, for example. Inside the phone, you can manipulate them, you can drag down to expand them, you can clear them, you can interact with them. But then on the lock screen, you can't do anything with them. You have to go into your phone to access the notifications and then clear them manually. Why? And then you have a lot of inconsistencies with the overall look of the phone. So if you've used other Android phones before, then you'll usually notice that most manufacturers adhere to Google's guidelines when it comes to design. Not with the Mate 10 Pro though. Some titles are huge and then other times where you'd expect there to be, you know, a readable size, the titles are gonna be small, fonts are all over the shop. There's just a lot of small inconsistencies all over the place. And that's really quite jarring and takes away from the experience. And then you've got problems with its actual UI design as well. Some of these themes produce app icons that look like they're a tribute to iOS 6. And then what you end up with is a mishmash between nice, clean material design and then app icons that date all the way back to the iPhone 3 or 4 with skeuomorphic design. It's really inconsistent and it just takes away, takes the gloss away from using this otherwise fantastic phone. So the bottom line is, EMUI is an acquired taste that takes a lot of cues from iOS. It certainly isn't the one for me. Otherwise, what we've got is a phone that has beautiful industrial design combined with excellent hardware, excellent cameras, excellent battery life, but questionable software choices. And so in the end, the Mate 10 Pro is an excellent, excellent phone, despite being a little bit pricey for Chinese smartphones. And that's especially considered you can probably find an S8 or an S8 Plus for hundreds less these days. Anyway, what do you guys think? Is this phone for you? Do you think it's a good choice? Or are you concerned that Huawei is spying on us for the Chinese government? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, if you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. And look forward to seeing you in the next one. Say good day to your mom for me. Cheers. Yeah.